In this video, we do some dinghy repairs before setting out sailing through Belize to our own little private hideaway island. We had spent the night docked at the Placencia Yacht Club in Belize. So, we left the dinghy tied up, or I did, um, on this side of the boat last night, and the wind shifted around, and the dinghy kind of went underneath the dock a little. I'm just getting banged around. You can kind of see with the stuff on here on the top. But it knocked the shift lever off, and so it wouldn't let me pull. So. Luckily, it all went back on. So this little shift lever lifts up this plastic thing that lets you engage the pull cord uh, to only when it's in neutral so that you don't you know, try to pull it when it's in drive. Um, but luckily, everything was able to go back together and it still shifts and it lets me pull the pull card now, cord now. So uh, try to get it started. are off to dock. So the plan today is we're just gonna go around the corner over here to the fuel dock um, because you know our starboard engines down to about a quarter of a tank and that's the one that the generator runs on. I mean we don't really have to have the generator but it's hot out here and I want to sleep in AC so yeah I'm getting more gas for the generator. Uh, diesel. Kind of feels weird just turning into a mangrove but I think the fuel station's here. It says it on the chart anyway I don't see it yet. All right, quick and painless getting fuel. That was pretty easy. It was uh, 300 bucks for 45 gallons of diesel and four bags of ice. So a little pricey here on their fuel. But. Okay, we are leaving the lagoon here and we got about 14, 15 miles up to Hideaway Key. Hideaway Key is where my friends uh, Kim and Dustin own Hideaway Key. They have like an Airbnb, they have a couple cabins. I think it's more just like a restaurant and bar. But, you know, they have some cabins you can rent there. Uh, unfortunately, they're not around. Uh, they This is the like lowest month of low season, right? So like there's not a whole lot of people here, so they went home for the month. Um, but anyway, they said we could get one of their mooring balls and kind of hang out. So we're going to do that. Cook dinner on the boat, have some steaks and all that. Have a nice relaxing, just the two of us kind of thing, which we haven't done yet. So that'll be nice. But, you know, a couple hours, two and about another two and a half hours up there. So apparently there's only a few barges uh, down here that like all the other islands when they're building stuff can use. And this is one of them, I guess, delivering a bunch of, you know, building materials to some of the islands out here. Apparently it's pretty expensive, like a couple thousand bucks a day or more just to have it. So interesting, but, well, and there are dolphins swimming next to it. Let's see if they come by us. Yeah, here they are coming at us. Hey guys. How you doing? I saw him go under. He probably is getting out of the way. They, they're they not very fast, so they, when they hear a boat coming, they're kind of a little late for it, but I saw a manatee go under. Oh, dang it, I love yeah. manatees. So I killed the motor as fast as I could, but he went down, he dove down. So they stay down, they can stay down a long time. I know, sorry. Well, at least you got to see some dolphins. <laughs> they might, they might, if they're, I think they're manatees down here. They might be called duodongs or something. I think duodongs might be in Indonesia. Manatees are here in the Americas, I'm pretty sure. But I saw one, I saw this tail go whew. Ready for this? No. <laughs> All right, so since it's just two of us, I'm gonna pick up the mooring so I can grab the, grab the line and pick up the, all that stuff so you get to drive. Yeah. So I've gone over a little bit of the driving stuff here. So once you get slow on a catamaran, you stop using the wheel and you use differential thrust. And that's a little more finesse. Lately I've been going through some hard stuff. Getting knocked down, getting right back a bad day partially submerged piece of wood that's a big old piece of wood under there uh, but okay so here is hideaway key just off to our port side here and uh, they've got like five moorings up here so we're they're not home obviously but they said we could use one of their moorings all right well when I pulled the line up I got covered in slime so <laughs> that was not the plan the plan was, though, is that I had this other line right here attached to our anchor cleat, and I was just going to run that through the eyelet and then attach it back to the cleat. And so, ideally, you want 
two points, so you hook either bow up to it. But I was just gonna run this temporarily because now we got the eyelet right here. If we can take our time running through the eyelet and back to the cleats. Pretty simple way of doing it. This is a lot more simple way to do it, especially if you're short-handed trying to run two lines to either bow. So now I think I've got it set up properly. Slimy? A little slimy. Yeah, I know, it's all over. Good afternoon. Cheers to quiet. Yeah, cheers. It's nice out here. Peace and quiet and relaxation. <laughs> it, uh, it's nice out here. So yeah, we're gonna cook dinner on the boat tonight. Just kind of chill. It's a little, it's the heat of the day right now. It's like 1.30, so we're gonna wait till about, you know, maybe 4.30 or 5. Sunset's like at 6 o'clock here, so it'll be down most of then. We'll do some paddleboard and go take the paddleboards into the mangroves. Maybe we'll see a manatee. <gasps> Don't tease me, I love right. those. Yeah, we'll see. All right, so uh, Justin and Kim aren't here, and they're not really open, but uh, they did say we could kind of walk around and give you guys a tour. So they got the caretaker there. We're going to do that real quick. And I'm too to let it go. If I could... Hideaway Key is a very small island, and most of it is actually submerged at high tide. I would take it all back if I could. I would bring back all the memories. Love it. Love it. <laughs> The caretaker Roy was on the island while the owner's away and gave us a tour. The bar and the restaurant are that way, and the and private that. cabana is this way. And they got a new Plus. puppy too. Plus. A little garden. Is that aloe? Aloe. aloe, yeah, cool. So they got their own cisterns here underneath the cabana so that you get the rainwater for drinking. Oh, yeah, you got all that stuff. It comes down here, so your rainwater. I imagine they drink uh, purified water, but you get a pump station back here and everything for pumping it up. This is the single cabin available for rent on the island. Yeah, if you just wanted to like come and chill somewhere with, with not much going on and just relax, be a good spot for it. All right, so that's the cabina and now the restaurant's this way. And what is what is your name? Roy. Roy, I'm Bobby. Bobby. Nice to meet you. I'm this you? is Dakota. Dakota. Mm -hmm. Dakota. Dakota, lucky. Yes. I still do. Yeah, yes, just say, like there that, yeah. <laughs> the storeroom. We have a backup generator. Yeah. yeah, if they need it. And we got a little lunch place there. Oh, yeah. So they got their own chicken coop out here. That's it. I mean, I guess this whole place is like marsh because like there's no dry land here. Everything's built over the water. Cool. Are they most, mostly for eggs? Oh yeah, they got eggs in there right now. There you go, yeah. And ducks too. This is his little boat dock where he takes deliveries and stuff. Yeah, I've had several meals here. It's kind of a cool spot. It cooks right back in there and you got the bar right here. I said, are you sure you've been here? Yeah. <laughs> There's our card right there, kind of cool. So they used to, you know, sleep up at the top there until they built their other house, kind of cool. Oh, this is the Amma's art studio. So Amma's their uh, little girl. How old is Amma, like 10 maybe? Definitely a hideaway, not much going on, but pretty cool. I didn't really, I mean, looks like they've kind of reclaimed some of the land there with like broken coral and stuff like that. The rest of it's underwater, pretty interesting though. But they're saying that's why there's no bugs here is because there's no stagnant water at all. It just goes with the tide. Pretty cool. So you want to buy an island? So that's the uh. Hold it, man. Your husband take a picture with you. I'm gonna pose with it. Everyone, go read this book. Come. It's good. So Kim uh, wrote a book on how they bought this island. That'd be interesting. I I, I was kind of wondering how they did that. So pretty cool. How long has it been now since they've had the island? Um, from two nine. 2009, okay, yeah, cool, that's a long time. Well, thank you for the tour, yeah, yeah, glad you got everything under control here. These have to be like the worst cuts of steak I've ever seen, I've ever attempted to cook. I mean, it's like a strip, but there's no intramuscular fat in that at all. It was so lean. So, 
I mean, and we don't have a tenderizer. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how well that's going to work. That's why you are responsible for this. I'm not taking a liability if it sucks. Yeah, so then we're going to do that. And we don't have like a vacuum sealer. So like, we're just going to put them in a zip. I'm going to get a different Ziploc bag. And we're going to kind of basically sous vide them, boil them, and then sear them at the end. We'll see how that goes. But I don't know. All right. The steaks are up to about 140 in the water. Let well, them sit for 45 minutes. And With your redneck sous vide? Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Using a, a oven thermometer. It's working, right? So we'll see how it goes. I'm not very confident in this. I think they're a little well done. Oh well. I guess we're about to find out. Yeah, we'll find out in a minute. They're definitely way more done than I would like. Well done steak. Mm -mm. Should I get you some ketchup with your well done yeah, steak? Yeah, let's do it. Let's try it. I mean, not bad. I told you, it's not that dry at least. The redneck sous vide worked. I mean, it's got some flavor. Wow. Okay, well, I'm, I was not expecting that. It's good. Oh, that knife. It's pretty tough. For a well done steak, it's not too bad. Thank you. Well, that was my first mm -hmm. time. We didn't have the proper equipment. Mm -hmm. Like, I've used an oven thermometer. Mm -hmm. Who knows how accurate that thing is underwater? And a pot of boiling water yeah, with Ziploc bags. Zip yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, I think it's all right. So she's throwing the, the fat overboard. No, no one's going to come out. They're coming, maybe. Yeah. Just happen to have them at the right place. I'll get it eventually. All right, it is, I think we're just gonna chill and maybe do a movie night or something. So, do the dishes and get that going. Thank you so much for watching. Our patrons got early access to this video as well as the extended scenes.